welcome. This is March 6th, the year 2010, the seventh day of the week, not a work day. It's the Lord's Sabbath, the day of rest, the day we are to congregate with other like believers. It's also time now, brethren, to get right on over to the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus, day 64 of the year 2010. R religious leaders asked Jesus about fasting. Well, brethren, I suggest you write all the, this down on chapter and verse so that you can go back and study it at your own leisure. Also, brother, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this study and start it all over again if you desire to be able to pick up everything we're trying to teach. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into it. Religious leaders ask Jesus about fasting. We'll start with Luke chapter 5, verses 33 through 39. We'll also find the same teaching in Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 17, and Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Their next complaint was that Jesus' disciples were feasting instead of fasting. Now this happened to be on the Sabbath, but we study back to it. John the Baptist's disciples were constantly going without food and praying. They declared, and so the disciples of the Pharisees, why are yours whining and dining. Jesus says, Do happy men fast? Do wedding guests go hungry while celebration with the groom? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be killed. Then they will not want to eat. Then Jesus used the illustration. No one tears off a piece of new garment to make a patch for an old one. Not only will what the new garment be ruined, but the old garment will look worse with the new patch on it. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine bursts the old wineskins, ruining the skin and spilling the wine. New wine must be put into new wineskins. But no one after drinking the old wine seems to want the fresh and the new. The old ways are best, they say. John the disciples fasted, went without food, as a sign of mourning for sin to prepare for the Messiah's coming. Jesus' disciples did not need to fast because he is the Messiah and was with them. Jesus did not condemn fasting. He himself fasted in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. He emphasized that fasting must be done for the right reasons. Soft hearts. Wineskins were goatskins sewed together at the edges to form watertight bags. Because new wine expands as it ages, it had to be put into new pliable wineskins. A used wineskin, having become more rigid, would burst and spill the wine. Like old wineskins, the Pharisees were too rigid to accept Jesus, who could not be contained in their tradition or rules. Christianity required new approaches, new truths, new structures. Our church program and ministry should not be so structured that they have no room for a fresh touch of the Spirit, a new method of searching out the truth through the Word of God, and search through the history of the church to see where the preachers of past eras started following the traditions of men instead of the true Word of God. We too must be careful that our hearts do not become 
so hard that they prevent us from accepting the new ways of thinking that Christ brings. We need to keep our hearts pliable so we can accept Jesus' life-changing message from His Father. Our need for daily prayer. Gracious God, let me behold the rainbow of hope on the dark storm clouds that brood over my life, that I might rest confidently on the covenant, order and sure, which was sealed by the precious blood of Christ. Faith is not a gift that grows. Pardon me, faith is a gift that grows as we use it. And you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dwelt bountifully with me. Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and His Son. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 19 reads, They rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. They wear the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, do you follow men's tradition or God's tradition? Do you use this seventh day that we now call a Saturday that would come from the old pagan from out of Babylonian for the Saturn God? But the seventh day is the Lord's Sabbath. The Hebrew word is Sabbat. You will find it in Genesis chapter 2 verses 2 and 3, in the words rest and resting, the Hebrew word sabbat, or we get our word Sabbath. And you will see on them verses, the seventh day is the only day that he ever sanctified. That means made holy. No other day. Are you following Christ now? Or are you following the tradition of men? Brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. But by the way, get down on your knees and repent of following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son for forgiveness to show you the wisdom, the understanding of the word that he sent you, the Bible. As I say, with that, we're closing for today. You all have a great and wonderful Sabbath.